You've tuned in to the Beyond Hope podcast, your access to success strategies and more to help you survive and thrive through your loved one's addiction challenges while you move onward and upward with your life. Now, here's your host, Char Jones. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. This is Char Jones, and I'm the host of Beyond Hope. Um, and I'm also the mother of an addict. So I understand, I understand what it means to love someone who struggles with addiction. It has been a very long journey for me, but I have gotten to a place of hope, uh, beyond hope, which is kind of the ironic twist to the name that I think really hope is where the healing begins. And on the other side of hope is life and joy and love and all these things that are no longer contingent upon the recovery of our addicts. So what I'm hoping to do with this podcast is bring to you so many people that I respect and admire, experts within the industry of addiction and recovery who who have so much valuable information to share um, with me, with you, with all of us. And in addition, we'll be bringing you some stories of hope and hopefully some laughs, maybe some tears along the way, but it's going to be all good. So thank you so much for joining me today. And I look forward to this journey with you. So before we get started, let's go ahead and take a listen to this message from one of my sponsors. I recently read an article that said 81% of Americans would like to become a published author. Chances are you're one of them. I know I am. So what's stopping us? Well, for me, it's a lot of hard work. It's time consuming. It's painful and expensive, right? Not anymore. For my next book project, I'm teaming up with hassle-free books and they are making it so easy for me to become an author. They're removing all the fuss and struggle and making it smooth and simple. And it's far more affordable than you could ever imagine. Go to hasslefreebooks.com and use the promo code SHAR to receive a 10% discount off of any book project. Get started right away and you can become a published author in as little as 45 days. And don't forget to send me a copy of your signed book, please. What are you waiting for? Get your story out there. Visit hasslefreebooks.com promo code SHAR today. All right. Thanks again for joining me and let's go ahead and get started with today's show. Hey, you guys, this is Char. Welcome. I am going to be honest with you. I'm totally geeking out right now. I am trying to figure out how to introduce my next guest. I'm at a loss. So I'm just going to just go for it. (laughs) I got to spend a half an hour recently with one of my favorite people, Jessica Butts. um, And we got to talk about some interesting topics, things I like to talk about, codependency and addiction. And yeah, I have a total girl crush on her. When I think about how to introduce her, well, she's my coach, uh, my mentor. She's a friend, but she's a total badass. That's what she is. I was just thinking about this recently that like she is probably one of the first few people that I ever talked to in such a vulnerable, honest way about how my daughter's addiction was impacting my life. And I was totally shut down. I was um, shutting down personally in my relationships, in my career, my health. And it was because, I think it's because I was a total mute. Like I couldn't talk about what I was going through. I lost my voice. So it's pretty amazing to look back at that period of time and kind of be able to recognize how far I've come. And it's pretty amazing that I get to introduce her to you today and I get to share her voice. Um, So I'm honored to do that. She just finished writing her second book. Um, She's getting ready to host her second annual life-changing event called Living Your Life from the Front Seat. That's happening in early October here in the Seattle area. Um, But I think you can attend online if you can't come in person. So you need to experience Jessica in live cult in color in person. Um, she is, she's got such incredible energy. 
So if you can attend that in person, I highly recommend you to do that. She's an expert in personality types, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Like she is an expert in so many areas and her ability to kind of tell it straight up, tell it like it is. She's kind of a no BS approach, not kind of, that is her approach, but she does it in a way that you feel cared for. You know that she's looking out for you. She connects with you at the heart and she's got a great personality and a lot of humor. And so... All of those things kind of come together and she's just an incredible experience. I guess that's how I would describe her. Um, she helps you kind of blast out those ego barriers that are getting in the way of you being successful in your life. She, she kind of holds a mirror up to you in a, in, a, in a way that's meaningful so you can see like how you are showing up in your life and where you shine and where you need to step back. and. I know for me, I have always been kind of told this, these similar messages since I was little, you know, that I was sensitive, that I was emotional, that I was a feeler, that I needed to quit worrying about what everybody thought of me. And it really just felt like an insult. It made me feel bad about who I was. I felt misunderstood for most of my life. I didn't want to be me. I wanted to be anybody else but me. And now I know a little bit more about myself. I didn't know I was an introvert. I just thought I was like a social nincompoop. <laughs> so thanks to Jessica, I now understand my personality type. I know that I'm empathetic. I know that I'm an intuitive. And I know that other, I have. there's a reason why I'm here and I have purpose to my life now. And I know what it looks like when I'm doing things that I was born to do. And I also know what it looks like when I'm stressed out and I'm acting from a place of fear and when I'm doing stuff that I suck at. I know what that looks like too. And I know how to step back from those things. And please, 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 after the interview, go check out her website, jessicabutts.com with two T's. Enjoy her. I look forward to hearing from you. Let me know what you think. Here she is. Jessica, hi. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, Char. I'm super honored and excited to be here to talk about ooh, a topic that I know has touched so many of our lives, mine and yours included. So oh thank you for gosh. having me. I was going to say the same, same thing. I am so honored to have you and I barely slept a wink last night because I was so excited. <laughs> At the end, I want you to talk to our listeners a, a little bit about how they can get in touch with you and work with you and, and what you're working on right now. But before we go there, let's just dive right in because I still remember, it must have been about two to three years ago, we were on the phone and I was probably having some kind of meltdown. <laughs> you, to me, you were like, Shar, I have a book I want you to read and you're not going to like it. <laughs> yes, yes. I'll never forget that. So would you mind talking to our listeners about codependency? What is it? Where does it come from? And how do we get rid of it? Yeah. Wow. Well, I don't, really don't know if we're going to be able to handle that topic in our <laughs> podcast, but I will do my best. Um, and so I think it is important for your listeners to, to know a tiny bit about me. Um, so uh, I was uh, married to an addict, a somewhat unknowing, not somewhat, unknowingly for the majority of the time, which I'm guessing most of the listeners are the same way. Uh, and then I actually went back to graduate school to become a therapist, a uh, psychotherapist to help primarily couples um, deal with these kinds of issues of addiction and and in marriages, unfortunately, some things will come after that are affairs and the lying and the deceit and all of that. So thank you for saying that. But I, I think it's important for people to know a little bit about who they're listening to. Um, and so yeah, Shar, you and I were having likely a codependent conversation. And like I say to most of my clients, um, the, the same thing happened to me when my ex-husband and I were going uh, to therapy. My, the therapist suggested I might be codependent. Clearly, I was incredibly offended as most people <laughs> when they find it, when I tell them the same thing. Um, and I write this actually in my book, and my book is about personality type and a little bit about codependency as well. Um, and that I picked up the book and I could not 
put it down. I wasn't living with my husband at the time. I had left him uh, temporarily and uh, I started reading it on my couch in my little apartment on Mercer Island, Washington. And I, 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 I threw the book on the floor. <laughs> I mean, I tell this story all the time. I literally did this. I mean, I wish there were like Instagram stories and things back in the day because I, it was like, it was on fire. I mean, I remember reading this book and going, Oh my God, I have this. I have this. What is this? I didn't know that it was a thing. I just thought I was out of my mind. I thought I was controlling. I thought, I thought I must be crazy because he's making this very normal. I just didn't know. I didn't know it was a thing. And she goes on and on. Melody Beatty is the leading authority and her main book is called Codependent No More. She has a number of books since then. Uh, I think Codependent No More is the original and is the best. <laughs> um, Language of Letting Go is a, also a great daily study guide. But in that, she describes in about three pages uh, what, who's codependent. And basically it's almost everybody at this point, uh, because there's, there is so much addiction and then codependency <clears throat> is what comes out of addicted relationships. And so if you think about the family of origin, the family history throughout centuries, there is some level of addiction and then codependency gets learned throughout our time uh, on this earth. So to answer your question, what is codependency? And I, I let me just say, I don't claim to be an expert on this. Um, I, I'm an expert in what I'm an expert in, which is personality type. Um, but I have lived this. I, I teach it. I try to help people. Um, I really go to Melody Beatty um, as the leading authority. But I think we're all experts in our own way as we've gone through um, our own situation. You know, as I, I coach now, I'm a, a business coach and you know, um, I say your mess is your message. <clears throat> and a big part of going through what we've gone through is we get to share our experience. And I like to say that it's not about outing the other person. It's not about telling the dirty little secrets. It's about sharing our experience. And when we do that, that's when lives can be transformed. I mean, I will never forget. I mean, you were one of them. I mean, I will never forget all the times that I talk to people about what codependency looks like, which I'll share with your listeners in just a second. Um, and, and every single time they're just, they're dumbfounded because they see themselves in it. It's the same thing I did when I read that book and I threw it across the floor and went, oh my God, I have that. Mm -hmm. It's so validating to know that we are not alone. Mm -hmm. That's why Al-Anon is so helpful. That's why <clears throat> learning about codependency, reading the books, your podcast, like yours, finding, I mean, just people listening going, oh my gosh, I feel that way as well. Mm -hmm. So do you want me to share with you my quirky little way that I oh. codependency? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, I keep clearing my throat. <clears> I've <throat> got a little something in there, so excuse me. <clears throat> um, okay, so this is my little, I don't even know where I came up with this. I'm a very visual person, and so uh, when I, through my years of studying codependency, personality type, <clears throat> per, uh, human behavior through uh, being a psychotherapist for a number of years, is <clears throat> think of it as a tennis court. So I, I have this visual of codependency like a tennis court. And lots of people will say, stay on your mat, stay on your side of the net. And that's kind of where this, this originated from is this idea of what's yours is yours. So if you think about a tennis court, there's two people on the tennis court playing a game. That can be anybody in your life. For you, it's your daughter. For me, it was my ex-husband. Um, and then in codependency, it can be anybody moving forward, your daughter, your son, your parents, your siblings, your lover, your partner, anybody. Um, and you guys are in a relationship together. <clears throat> and the two forms of codependency are, one, when one person on the side of the net lets the other person jump onto their side of the net and manage and control them. And what that looks like is that person loses their voice. They stop saying what they need to say. 
They stop standing up for themselves. They lose their ability to have opinions. They kind of lose themselves. If you think about that, Mm -hmm. and it's very sad and it's very codependent. I was this version. My ex-husband was a very strong personality as well as a massive addict. Uh, And I just, I I didn't know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to handle it. So I just shut up. I just went along to get along. If I'm being totally honest, there were times that I just drank with him because I just didn't want to deal with it. I didn't know how to deal with it. So that is a form, all of those are forms of codependency. Uh, going along to get along, shushing, not standing up for yourself, not educating yourself. And I, I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't have a voice. I had no voice because I just didn't know what to do until I started educating myself, of course. And then you get into this realization of like, oh, right. Okay. I'm not the only one. So that's the first version. And I'd love your listeners um, to, to hopefully be able to de- identify which one they think they are. And then, of course, there's the other side, which is the guy or the girl who ju- who jumped on the other side of the net. They are the controllers. They are the managers. And I really want you to have this visual. As listeners, you might even close your eyes for a minute. Please don't if you're driving. But if you're somewhere, <laughs> I always think about that when I do podcasts. I'm like, don't do this if you're driving your car. <laughs> but if, if you can imagine. When that person jumps on the other side of the net to manage and control somebody else, it means that they've lost themselves. It's actually making me tear up thinking about it. And on that side of the net, they've abandoned themselves. Mm. There's nobody over there. Mm. They don't have any, they're not taking care of their own shit. Mm -hmm. Right? You know those people. This was my Mm ex-husband. He didn't want to look at his addiction. So he sat around and managed and controlled me because that's a heck of a lot easier than it is to look at your own stuff. Mm. And I'm not saying that all addicts are his side, but a lot of addiction is you don't want to look at your own stuff. So you blame and manage and control other people because you have abandoned yourself. And so we have to pay attention to who we are in this relationship and how we start basically staying on your own side of the net, having your own opinions, having your own life, doing your own thing. You cannot change that person. No one can change anybody. And so when we try, it's just this futile effort. So that is the whole you know, concept of staying on your side of the net. I remember having conversations with him And I would say what I needed to say very curtly and shortly and like not a lot of words. I would just say it. And then I would literally say in my head, Char, stay on my side of the net, stay on my Mm. side of the net. Because it's all, let me control you. Let me try to manage you. Let me try to change your mind. Let me blah, 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 blah. No, no. I took the time to get clear that this is how I feel. This conversation is over unless you have something constructive to say. Because I have to stay on my side of the net. That is so good. There's also this whole, you know, I've taken a kind of another step of thinking about when you leave the court and you're up in the stands, you might be at the very, very top of the Wimbledon stands or something. (laughs) And you, you know, and that's when, and that's what that's called detachment because there's healthy detachment, which is staying on your own side of the net. That's actually healthy. And it's also detached, but it's healthy detachment detachment is staying in the relationship and just being detached. You're not dealing with it. You're not dealing with that person and you're not dealing with your own side of the net. That's not healthy either. And then there's also enmeshment, which good God, we all know this. Jeez Louise. I don't think it's possible to actually be in a relationship at some point or another, and not be enmeshed, but enmeshment looks like those two people on the net are on the court in the net together. They're all tangled up in it. Neither one is on their own side of the net. They're all, you know, I think of it like a twister game. They're all up in each other's business and they're totally enmeshed and entangled in this net. And both of those are incredibly unhealthy. 
the only healthy view and the only healthy way to be is two healthy people being on their own side of the net. And let me just clarify that before we move on is that it, it takes two healthy people. So when people try to get an addict to be healthy, as long as they're currently in their addiction, they're not. They're not. And when that's where we as the codependent people trying to fix them, that's where we spin our wheels, right? Sure, I know you know this. Oh, absolutely. We spin our wheels because we're trying to reason with an unreasonable person. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean they're a bad person, but their addiction has taken over. I know that feeling. I know every single one of your viewers knows that feeling. When you're healthy, trying to have like a rational conversation with an addict, and you're like, what's going on right now? Like, am I insane? Why is this that way? Right? Oh my gosh. And the visual of just leaving your side of the net, that is exactly where there's so much pain and heartache there with my moms out there. My, and you know, my parents, grandparents, anybody who loves an addict, they understand what it means to totally abandon their life and trying to save this person. And it is sad and it is heartbreaking. And the the really sad part is that many people never, they never, they never even realize it. And that there's a different way to live, like that there's all this, there's a, there's life on the other side, like, like oh. with certain tools that you can learn to live in. And, and it's, it's absolutely no longer contingent upon the addicts recovery. Like you can learn to live in a way that's healthy and joyful. Char, I have chills right now. I'm nodding my head. I, like my whole body is with you and what you're saying. It's God, I'm glad you started this podcast because you're absolutely <laughs> right. And oh my God, people don't know that. It, they I don't. don't know that. Look no. at me. I'm, this is the power of addiction. I'm five years out of that relationship and it still affects me that way. Imagine what it's like to be in it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's so powerful. And I know your listeners know that feeling. Mm-hmm. It is the most hopeless Mm. place to be when you don't have answers. And you're absolutely right, Shard. There is a way out. There is hope. And it's not necessarily easy. And sometimes you have to go on, go on that path on your own. I mean, with help Mm of, you know, sponsors and books and coaches and therapists and Al-Anon. But that means that person may not come with you. But you're, you're so right, Char. You're so right that there is a way out. And the codependency, I think, is just the tip of the iceberg. And so if our listeners can just get, capture a little piece of what you've said and, and run with it, you know, do your research, learn more about it. Because for me, that was, that was really the starting point for me. I had no idea. Really? I had no idea. I had no idea. I didn't know what it was. I didn't, yeah, yeah, I was clueless. And so that really was the beginning for me, uh, Mm -hmm. starting to really look within myself. Yeah. Well, uh, don't you agree too, Char, that you got to kind of hit rock bottom, right? I mean, it's just Mm -hmm. like addicts. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a disease, I think, just like their disease. Like I say all the time, I'm a recovering codependent. Uh, it doesn't go away for me. This is something I have to work on every day. And I think for me, and it sounds like for you too, there is a place where you get of like, there's something wrong with me. Mm. Like, I can't do this. Yeah. I mean, it, it just like the steps. I mean, you're powerless over it. Just like addicts are powerless over drugs and alcohol. We're somewhat powerless over this. Yeah. And, and, we, sure. get to, and we get to that place of like, There, I got to do something. This is crazy making. And I think your listeners in particular probably have that feeling as well. It sounds like you had it. I know I had it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I think the the critical point, Char, and I'd love to hear your opinion on this too, is that you just get to a place of like, nothing's worse than this. Yeah. I can't live like this anymore. Absolutely. I mean, there was a time for sure where I didn't think I was going to make it. And it breaks my heart now just to think back of where I was. I was so helpless, just fetal position. Like I just, because my identity was, it was so, um, like you said, I was just so fixated on saving her life. Mm 
Yeah. And like, I felt like I was born to be her mom. Like that was my purpose. And if I couldn't help her be the woman that I knew that she could become, why was I here? And I know moms are stuck there. And so this is just so absolutely important. The message that you're sharing is so important. And, and it kind of leads me into something that I was wanting to touch on too. Like how important do you think it is to have a community of people to turn to who understand what you're going through because we, we do, we do what we know. So we go to people that we are familiar with and we have these routines, but when crisis comes into play, those people are not always equipped. Oh God. They're not equipped. God. I'm <laughs> laughing. I, I mean, again, this is funny that it's over phones. I'm cracking up right now <laughs> to answer your question directly. It's critically important. Right. If there's, if, I mean, it's cr- it's essential and there's, and there's so many reasons it's essential and you're hitting on so many of them. I will never forget trying to talk and God bless them. Like they're still really good friends of mine, but some of my <laughs> very best friends and they would say things like, well, you know, why doesn't he just stop drinking? Are you right. effing kidding me? Oh like, are we having this conversation <laughs> or things like, well, I don't really know any alcoholics. Is that really a thing? Oh my gosh. Or I would hear things like, um, well, she's an adult now, you know, or, or why can't, why can't you just let her live at home with you? I mean, I can't even entertain these conversations. It was so heartbreaking for me in the time I was like, she just feels so misunderstood. Like they had no clue. I had to totally abandon those resources and find new resources. Yeah. So I think there's a number of reasons. One is what we're talking about right now is that you have to, to find people that get what you're going through. And for those of you who are in the very beginning stages of this, please don't think that this is just a complain game. Like that is not what Al-Anon is. And if you're going to those kind types of meetings, then you need to go to different meetings, just like a therapist, just like a doctor. You have to find the one that fits. It doesn't, you know, you don't walk in necessarily and it's the best meeting ever. You really need to figure out what works best for you. So true. And then, It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to abandon those friends, but don't spend your time talking with people who don't get it. Um, I've had a lot, sadly, I've had many, many clients through the years um, that have talked to their friends about it and they either, they just can't deal with it. They don't know what to do. So they either just, they just stop talking about it, which I think is the worst possible thing for those Mm -hmm. of us in, in that position of being in a relationship with an addict, like pretending it away, um, Mm -hmm. or they banish them. Mm -hmm. Like they don't know how to deal with it. And so they just don't want to deal with it. I mean, to me, those people are the saddest people in the history of the universe. I mean, they actually just kind of make me sick Mm -hmm. um, because they just, they can't deal with it. They can't deal with their own stuff. And so they just, they basically just cut people out. So Mm -hmm. again, I, you may or may not want to keep those kinds of people in your life. Cause when stuff gets real, some people just can't handle it. Yeah. Um, but finding a therapist, finding a, a podcast like this, finding a community. Um, I mean, we live in a day and age right now where you can find pretty much anything you need in chat rooms or Facebook groups or Al-Anon meetings um, or great therapists. I mean, there's so many resources out there and let yourself, let yourself just be in it. You know, it's a safe place. Um, Yeah, it's just critically important and it can change everything because the reality is we don't know any different when we're in it. Yeah. People who grow up or that are sexually abused, they actually don't know any different. They don't even know that there's something wrong until they get into school and they're like, oh, this seems a little different or wrong. Mm -hmm. Like you don't know. I mean, I remember being in my marriage and just thinking like, oh, is this like how this is? Like, and then you start to justify it. Oh, well, everybody drinks. I see people drinking all the time or, you know, they're in their twenties. They're going to do some cocaine. Like it's no big deal. You start justifying things. Um, and then you get into a bad, bad place. So you you just got to find resources that you can talk to that get you that you can relate to. It's, it's just critical for your health. Well, and then I find too, is once you start to get healthy, you can re-enter those relationships in a different way. I agree. What happened with me. It was like, okay, now I'm kind of coming full full circle and I'm, I'm right. I'm recognizing that they just didn't have 
they just didn't have the ability to ha- entertain those kind of conversations with me about my daughter being homeless. I mean, they don't understand. They don't they understand do that. You're absolutely right. You know? And you're right. You can start having, a, I think that's an important point what you just made. You can start to have an, a new relationship with them. And a big part of it is because we're healthier. Yeah. Yeah. You were healthier in the beginning. We're kind of a hot mess. It's like, Oh, oh for sure. Oh my God, this is happening. Not oh, kind of. Gosh, you did that. Yeah. I mean, let's get real. That's not a whole lot of fun to be around. <laughs> That's well, what they're just true. for. That is what Al-Anon is for. And so we, we are different. It doesn't mean that we can't still talk about it, but we are also healthier to be able to have a normal kind of healthy conversation. You know, it is when you're in it, it's all encompassing and you got to get through it. You, you know, you're in survival mode. That's you totally know. it. That's totally it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like just moving. I mean, and that's exhausting, not, oh. for, not just for us, but for our friends and family. They're like, Man, I can't even deal with you. And I get it now. It's like, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's also difficult because they don't know how to help. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know how to help. And when we are, I mean, this is a little harsh, but we've all been there when we are somewhat, you know, in the martyr role, meaning we're complaining, but we're not doing anything about it yet. That's also hard. I mean, that's hard for people to listen to us complain about things yet. We don't know what to do and they don't have help. They don't know how to help us unless they've been through it. And so, you know, it it becomes this almost awkward relationship of like, wow, they're going through some serious stuff, but they don't know how to help. I mean, I remember doing that, you know, when, you know, my ex was having affairs and things and just talking to friends like, oh, you need to leave his ass. and Oh Oh, my God. And it's just like, okay, well, you're not in it. So you really have no idea how difficult this is. Yes, I probably should have, but how helpful is that? information. I don't know if it's helpful. So uh, it's, yeah, it's incredibly helpful. Jessica. Oh my gosh. I I'm going to want to have you back. Cause I know like, like, the, the, 30, like the, the 30 minutes is almost gone. And I am so, I so want to be respectful of your time, but before we, so you have to come back because I want to I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk about guilt and shame and, and, and the impact that that has on our lives. And I have so many things I want to talk to you about. So you have to come back, but before we close, just a couple things I wanted you to talk about how people can work with you and what's new and exciting in your life. And then I was also hoping you could share a couple random facts about yourself that most people wouldn't know. (laughs) This is so funny. Yeah. So, you know, sure. It's interesting. Uh, I used to be a therapist and I'm, and I just, I'm just transparent. I'm not anymore. I now am a, an entrepreneurial business coach. I really help women like you, Shar, who are building a whole new life for themselves. It's so exciting to watch people like you grow into what they're supposed to be doing in this world. Um, and this is, you know, your mess is your message and you are gifted at this. And I think all your listeners would agree that this is your gift. I mean, you're beautiful at this and the lives that you get to change. So that's kind of what I do now. However, um, I just finished my second book. I have my woo! first book. Is, thank you. It's, woo, I feel like a different person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, having it be done. Uh, the first book is called Live Your Life from the Front Seat. And the second book is called Don't Do Stuff You Suck At. Uh, for your listeners in particular, Live Your Life from the Front Seat would probably be an excellent read resource for them. Um, it's a lot about your innate personality type for those that, you know, believe are, are Christians. Um, it's a strong belief that your, your type, you are born with your type. It is a God given thing. Um, and then what do you do with it? And how does that show up in codependency? Because I have a very strong belief that your type, um, actually influences your level of codependency, um, and, and how, and how you show up as codependent, whether or not you're the one giving yourself up or you're the one who's controlling and managing other people. So your innate personality type actually um, factors into that quite a bit. So I think that's an interesting aspect. Um, and then oh, I- wait, 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 back up on that, back up on that. So for me, you know, I'm an INFP. So what does that mean? <laughs> Yes, you are definitely the type that allows people to manage and control you. Okay, carry on. <laughs> so thinkers, um, extroverted thinkers and extroverted J's and J personality types uh, have more of the tendency to manage and control other people. So we'll, let's have a whole nother 
talk, yes. we'll have a whole nother call on that because perfect. that's okay. just all my own stuff. Like okay, perfect. that's my own belief. <laughs> Um, and so I, I am the, you know, the CEO and founder of this company called Front Seat Life. Um, and for those that are interested in kind of learning about living your life from the front seat and living your life according to your personality type and, and empowerment and all of those kinds of things, um, I have a membership group, which is called the Front Seat Life Membership Group, where I just, I, I keep like-minded people together. I'm hoping to, you know, educate, inspire, um, teach them all these kinds of things we're talking about, personality type, up-leveling your mindset, codependency, how that shows up in your relationships, uh, because the next book is really going to be about personality type and relationships, um, and codependency will be a huge, huge part of that. So, uh, you can learn all of this um, on my website at jessicabutts.com. Follow me on Instagram, Front Seat Life. And then, of course, I've got all the Facebook stuff. So, uh, I, I, you know, I love what I do. I love, love, love what I do. I love having deep conversations like this and empowering people and educating them. And uh, and I know you're the same, Char. Like, and your listeners are probably the same. Like, this is our jam. And let's just say this. We have to stick together. We have to stick together. We're going to go crazy if we don't. So, uh, so come, you know, play along, listen to Shar, come join me, uh, whatever you want to do. But I, I, I this is just my passion. My well, and you have an, you have an event coming up. Can you share about that? Yeah. So I have a, an event called front seat life. It only happens once a year because it's an insane amount of work. So there's the book and there's the roadmap and then there's an in-person event, uh, which again, only happens once a year. And it is really a time to, gosh, I am teary today, to get out of your life, right? And come be there to say, you know, stay at the hotel, get away. It's three days. It's October 5th, 6th, and 7th um, in Redmond, Washington. It's a cute boutique hotel. And it. I'm hearing from people that have uh, attended in the past that one of the things they love the most is that it's this deep, deep work that we do while we're there. But oh gosh, I attended last year. It was, it's life changing. Yeah. Thank you. But it's also this time to be you, you know, for those of you who are in a codependent relationship right now, uh, the power of stepping away from that for three days to focus mm-hmm. on you and to learn about yourself and to mm-hmm. learn about the garbage, the limiting beliefs that you've been putting into your head, uh, learning about your personality type. And then my, you know, my coined slogan is to show up and start being unapologetically who you are in this mm-hmm. world. Um, I, I honestly feel like three days can change your life. So yeah. I, and again, all of that is called the front seat life event. It's a, uh, it golly, it's in six weeks. So, um, I would be honored for people to come and join. Oh my gosh. And you have some incredible, uh, guests there that are just going to really help people be even more present. Absolutely. It's such a gift to give to yourself. Yes. And now you have to, you have to give us some, some random facts. I promise we'll keep it a secret. <laughs> It's so funny. I have no idea other than, okay, I have a couple. So the Seahawks start today. We live in Seattle. We're very Seahawks proud. Uh, My dad wrote for the Seahawks for 37 years and I've been a lifelong season ticket holder. So I guess there's one random fact. And then clearly I grew up in a sports family because my middle name is Aaron, like the boy spelling A-A-R-O-N, because I was named after Hank Aaron, the baseball player. Oh my God. Yes. And so I have all this random, like very actually quite expensive now, um, uh, of Hank Aaron memorabilia and all kinds. Oh, wow. Of it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing. Actually. That's so, cool. uh, yeah. Sports runs uh, deep in my family. And I think of the way that I look, I'm quite feminine and pretty girly and, uh, into hair and makeup and things. So I, I think people probably wouldn't know that about me. So there's your random fact. I love that. I love that. And, and, you know, I just want to say like, you have definitely been a guiding light in my life and for so many others. And and really my hope was just for you to reach even one person today who needed to hear your message of hope and inspiration and validation. And I think that we were able to do that. And I just am so grateful to you for being here and you have to come back and I can't wait to read your book. 
what it, stop you. doing stuff you suck at. I mean, I wish that you would have written that a long time ago. To say yeah, don't do stuff you suck at. Yeah, come <laughs> out on ten ten. So October tenth, okay. right after the event. It's going to be a big month around uh, around these parts. So yeah. JessicaButts.com with yep. two T's. Okay, thank you so much for being here, and just have a wonderful day. And again, thank, thank you, you for making. Our, thanks, listeners. Bye. Hey everyone, thank you so, so much for tuning in and for helping me to connect with other moms of addicts or loved ones who are struggling with addiction in their lives. If you have questions for me, comments, suggestions on future show content, or perhaps there's a topic, a specific topic that you would like to hear from an expert in the field, I would love to hear from you. I am also interested in sharing your voice. So if you have messages of hope or personal stories that you think would resonate with our listeners, please send me an email. You can type me out a message or you can include an attachment um, to an audio clip with your voice. You can send that to Shar at beyondhoperadio.com. And with that, thank you again. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to Beyond Hope. For show notes and more, head on over to beyondhoperadio.com. A huge thank you to recoveryinnovators.com and James Healy. Thank you so much for putting up with me (laughs) and for helping me to um, produce and launch the show. I couldn't have done it without you. You You're so awesome. And to anybody else who has been considering uh, working with James, highly recommend him. Please go over to his website and check it out, recoveryinnovators.com.